Hey guys, Millie here. I know I'm a few minutes early, but I'm just gonna be early um, so that I'm here and ready for you when you show up. So I'm just gonna get settled and wait for anyone who's joining. I love that my backdrop is not actually wide enough, so we're gonna have to make some changes here to how this is set up for the future. <laughs> but anyway, um, I am very excited about this uh, exercise that I'm about to take you guys through because self-compassion has been life-changing for me. I found out about self-compassion um, work through Brene Brown, which if you've been following me for any length of time, you know I love Brene Brown and that I constantly reference her work. So self-compassion is such a important part of self-worth and wholehearted living, which I like to talk about. And I'm gonna take you through a little bit of an exercise together. And I'm also going to explain a little bit about self-compassion, what the components are, and um, you know how we can implement them into our lives, especially right now during all this, you know, crazy world trauma that's happening, and you know we're we're all getting um, a little bit more antsy, and our nerves are frayed, and I don't know if it's just me, but um, sorry guys, I'm a little bit out of breath because. <laughs> of how pregnant I am, um, you know, we're all feeling it. The inner mean girl is rearing her nasty little head and we don't want to be, you know, rude to the inner mean girl, but we definitely want to have her not be the main voice that we hear in our head. So um, I'm not exactly sure if it's 12 o'clock on the nose because what I'm on, um, when I'm on Facebook Live here, it doesn't show me the time on my phone. So I'm sure it's close enough that I'll just dive into a little bit about what self-compassion is, what the components are, and um, you know, a couple of myths as well, just very quickly. So self-compassion is the practice of being compassionate towards oneself, which is the most obvious definition, right? But um, what it is, it's like basically, if we think about how we want to act towards friends, like showing them loving kindness, um, we want to be doing that towards ourselves as well. So the three components of self-compassion are kindness, right? That's involving self-talk and, you know, the, the practices that we show to ourselves. The second component is common humanity. So a lot of us feel like we're the only ones who are in the situations that we're in because we feel isolated and we believe that our problems are somehow, you know, different than what other people are going through because we think that maybe we're not as strong as other people or we're more complicated or, you know, we just don't handle things as well. So we don't think other people are going through the same things that we're going through. But the truth is, we all go through these emotions. We all go through shame. We all feel judged. We all feel blame. Um, we all feel these emotions all the time. It's very, very normal. So recognizing our common humanity is a huge part of self-compassion. And especially right now, I mean, we're all going through the same stuff. Like most people are having good days and bad days and we're trying our best. The third part of self-compassion, the third component, is mindfulness. And really, mindfulness is the most important part of practicing self-compassion. And what mindfulness is, I know it's a buzzword, but what mindfulness is in this situation is um, seeing things as they are. So it's not over-identifying with a struggle or an emotion, but it's also not denying the fact that the struggle or emotion exists. So what it is is really a moment-to-moment -moment awareness of where we're at it's being in touch with where we're at exactly where we're at in the moment and one of the biggest things that i found that helped me with my mindfulness abilities because the truth is you could you know think read about mindfulness all day and, and have the intention to practice mindfulness and love the idea of mindfulness but the truth is uh, we need to be able to slow down enough in the moment and not be reactive 
and that's a very very difficult thing to do if you're angry and you know you your kid or your spouse has like aggravated you your first reaction is to react we react we're reactive right and it's hard to switch that off it's hard to slow down it's hard to be mindful of our reactions because they're so automatic right like we all have our triggers and it's very automatic for us to respond in certain ways so the mindfulness part of self-compassion is the most important in my in my experience um, slowing down and doing meditative practices allows you the mental space and capacity for mindfulness so as part of my new 5 a.m routine that i've been on i don't actually get up right at 5 i get up more like 5 20 5 30 um i meditate for 10 minutes i have the calm app right now i'm actually going through a series they have a seven day series on self-esteem and there's a series on self-compassion and I do that for 10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes every morning. That's how I start my day is with a meditation. And, you know, not every single day does it work out. Like this morning, my son woke up at 530. So I actually got through the first like eight minutes of my meditation and then he he woke up and I didn't get to finish it. So meditation is such a huge, huge thing. And for so long, I was like, when am I going to meditate? Like I'm a new mom. I don't have time to meditate. Like, where am I going to steal away 10 minutes? I could be doing so much so many more other things with those 10 minutes in my day like how is that how is it realistic you know so what I decided to do this past month because we are um, we are all stuck together right and it feels like we don't get any time any alone time right now is I decided to get up before everybody else so it depends on what time all your people get up but I realized that I wasn't doing too many productive things in the evening because I was too tired. So most of the time in the evenings I was spending watching TV or scrolling on social media. And I decided that that was less important than the time I needed to give myself. So I cut that. I'm going to bed, trying to go to bed by 10. Most nights my light goes out by 10.30 and my alarm goes off at 5.20 in the morning. And obviously, <laughs> an after in the day <laughs> because I'm so pregnant and so tired. But anyways, um, I get that about half an hour in, first thing in the morning, I do my meditation for 10 minutes and then I do um, a gratitude journal I just started in Rachel Hollis's Start Today journal, which has um, five spots for gratitude. I was using the five minute journal before for my gratitude practice. I really like the five minute journal. It's a little bit pricey for what it is, in my opinion. You can write the same things out in a normal journal and they are um, in the morning, you do three things that you're grateful for. And then you do three things that would make today great. And it has to be all things within your control and then you do an affirmation. So I love that progress, that process because gratitude again is very, very powerful. That's not what this is about, but we do gratitude or I do gratitude and then I work in my um, mindful self-compassion workbook. So this is what we're gonna be doing our exercise out of today. I love the work of Dr. Kristen Neff and Christopher, Christopher um, Germer. They're really the pioneers in the field of self-compassion. Uh, Dr. Kristen Neff, hi Haley. Dr. Kristen Neff has a, um, a great book on self-compassion. And also if you wanna read more into self-compassion, you can obviously read The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown. She talks a lot about um, courage um, compassion and connection. Those are the three big things of the whole book. And uh, there's another book by Tara Brock who called Radical Self-Compassion that I'm diving into right now. And Pema Children is another great resource for mindful self-compassion. And I just started diving into her audiobook called um, when things fall apart, which is a 20 year old book, but my goodness, it is made for today. It is made exactly for what's happening right now. So I highly encourage if you want to uh, listen to a good audiobook, grab that one. 
Okay, moving along, I know I'm talking a lot about things and not getting into the exercise, but I did want to give some people, uh, you know, time to join before I get into it. So what we're going to be doing right now is um, an exercise to help us meet difficult emotions. And it's sort of like a meditation, uh, which is really, really powerful because like I explained before, meditation gives you more space to be mindful in your day to day. And a quote that I've been really loving and living by right now, which I don't know who's, who it's from, but it's small incremental changes made daily can have astounding results over time. So these tiny little 10 minute, five minute practices that you can incorporate into your day to day can really, really add up over time. It's not like you're gonna see a difference the first day you do it, but it can have a really soothing effect. So this exercise is uh, helping you deal with difficult emotions. And I just wanna go through the five stages of acceptance when you're meeting difficult emotions. So each successive stage corresponds to a gradual release of emotional resistance. So first thing we do is we resist our emotions, right? We were like, oh, why am I feeling this? Can it just go away? We struggle against these emotions that are overcoming us. The second thing is that we um, start to explore those emotions. We start to get curious about them. And, uh, and then we turn towards our discomfort and you ask yourself, well, what am I feeling here? Which is a key part of mindfulness is starting to ask yourself, what are these emotions, right? The third thing is tolerating the emotion safely enduring and holding space for yourself, holding steady during the emotion. Oh, hello, we have a kitty. Um, you know, you, you don't have to like it, but you're, you're at the point where you're able to tolerate it. The fourth is allowing the emotion, letting the feelings come and go, not trying to get them to go away as fast as possible or denying them or shoving them down and saying something to yourself like, it's okay, I can make space for this emotion. And then the last one is befriending those emotions and seeing the value in your difficult emotional experiences and asking yourself what you can learn from it, okay? So those are the stages that we'll work through and you can't expect yourself to just like jump to the last stage um, right the first time you go through an exercise like this or even in the, in the moment. So the, the great sort of like key tool here is this system called soften, soothe, allow, which is what you're going to be meeting these emotions with. You're going to be softening your body, soothing yourself and allowing the emotion, okay? So that is something you can definitely learn to slow down um, enough to, to practice during a difficult emotion, but this, is, this exercise is something you could do sort of like daily to get better at it if you're not into um you know actually sitting and meditating at this point okay so here we're gonna get right we're gonna get right into it um so anybody who's watching or listening right now who's able to do this i want you to uh, find a comfortable position either sitting or lying down and i want you to close your eyes okay <laughs> Talking is harder than you would expect at eight months pregnant. Okay, so I want you to close your eyes and I wanna take three relaxing breaths, okay? So I'm gonna do it with you. Deep, deep breaths right into your belly. So we're gonna go. Great. And now I want you to place your hand on your heart or I want you to place your hand in another soothing place. So for me, I really like putting my hand on my cheek. You can put your hand on your heart. You can put one hand on your heart, one hand on your belly, um, whatever feels like soothing to you. So I want you to uh, put your hand somewhere that feels soothing and then Take a few moments now to remind yourself that you're in the room, that you're just here, 
and that you are worthy of kindness, okay? So just take a moment and tell yourself, I am here. Feel yourself sitting on the chair. Feel your legs touching the chair. And tell yourself, I am worthy of kindness, no matter what. I'm worthy of kindness despite my accomplishments in the day, despite the things that are left undone at the end of the day, I'm worthy of kindness. Okay, and now I want you to let yourself recall um, a mild to moderately difficult situation that you're in right now, okay? So it could be like stress in one of your relationships, um, you know, stress that you're experiencing with your children at home, um, don't choose a super difficult problem or anything very trivial, but just choose a problem that can generate like a little bit of stress in your body when you're thinking about it. And now I want you to clearly visualize the situation or a situation involved in the bigger scheme of situations. Who's involved, what's happening. And as you relive this situation, I want you to start noticing any emotions that are arising within you. So I hope you, you've kept your eyes closed and you're still taking some nice deep breaths. And I want you to just start labeling any emotions that come up. So it could be anger, could be sadness, could be grief, confusion, fear, despair, hopelessness frustration. So if you're having many emotions, just see if you can have a name for the strongest emotion that's associated with the situation. So let's just breathe and give it a minute. Okay, now repeat the name of the emotion to yourself in a gentle understanding voice as if you were validating for a friend that she was feeling. So you can say to yourself, that's anger, that's grief, that's, you know, fear, that's confusion. Okay, now I want you to Expand your awareness to your body as a whole. Be aware of your entire body. And recall that situation that you recalled earlier at the beginning. And now I want you to scan your body for where you feel this. Do you feel it in your throat? Do you feel some kind of tension in your chest? Is it in your shoulders, your head? Where do you feel that discomfort? Just feel whatever is in your body right now. Okay, now if you can, choose a single location in your body where the feeling expresses itself most strongly. Maybe it's muscle tension or maybe it's like a heartache feeling or a hollowness, emptiness, a pit. Okay, so in your mind, just incline towards that spot and allow your awareness to fully inhabit that spot. And inhabit that physical sensation of the emotion in your body. Okay. Now I want you to soften into the location where you feel the difficult emotion. So try to let the muscles soften and let them relax as if you're in warm water. So soften, breathe, 
soften. Release the tension. Okay, we're not trying to change anything. We're just holding in a tender way. Okay, just soften a little around the edges if you can, even if you can't fully soften. Now I want you to soothe yourself because of this difficult situation. So if you wish, place your hand over the part of your body that feels uncomfortable and just feel that gentle touch of your hand. Imagine warmth and kindness as best you can flowing through your hand into your body. Maybe even think of your body as if it were the body of a beloved child. Or imagine yourself as a child. And ask yourself if there's some comforting words that maybe you might need to hear. So imagine you had a friend who was struggling in the same way. What would you say to her? I'm so sorry you're feeling this way. I care deeply about you. It's so hard to feel this. I can understand how hard that would be. May I be kind to myself. So if you need to, feel free to open your eyes whenever you wish or let let go of the exercise if you need to and just feel your breath. Okay. And if you're still in it and you can still continue, just allow the discomfort to be there. We're not trying to change anything. We're trying to make room for it. And we're trying to release the need to go away, make it go away. The whole point of this is just to be that friend who can hold space for ourselves. So just allow yourself to be just as you are, just like this, if only for this moment. And if you want to, you can repeat this cycle. You could do it again with your emotion going a bit deep, deeper each time and sticking to the sensation if it moves in your body or even if it, it morphs into a different sensation or emotion. So what you're gonna do is just continue to soften, soothe, say something nice to yourself, give yourself some soothing, compassionate touch wherever you need it. And then just allow it, allow that emotion to be there, okay? So now we want to let go of the practice, let go of the effort, and again, focus on your body as a whole. Allow yourself to feel whatever you feel and be exactly as you are in this moment, okay? So this exercise is to meet difficult emotions. This is something that you can do in the moment if you notice yourself getting aggravated. You can just do a very quick, deep breath in. Touch. Close your eyes for one second. Allow. Okay, that's anger, okay? I'm feeling angry right now. Feels like a, a tightness in my throat. Relax the shoulders. You can move your hand around, whatever it is you need to do. And that's a really quick and easy way in a moment to, to slow down. And then you can also do this, you know, as a, a sorry, <laughs> an intentional practice. That's the word I was looking for, baby brain an intentional practice that you can make space for in the morning or who knows at the end of the night right before you go to bed this could be a habit that you develop and uh, this book that I'm working out of right now the mindful self-compassion workbook you can buy it on Amazon it's 25 bucks 
I'd say it's really, really worth it. It's not just um, exercises. It's also, there's also chapters and in each chapter there are informal practices, exercises and reflections. So the reflection for today asks, did you notice a change when you labeled the emotion? What did you observe when you explored your body for the physical sensation associated with that emotion? What happened when you softened that part of the body, soothed yourself, and allowed it? These could be great journal prompts too, um, just as a suggestion. Did the emotion change for you during the exercise? Or did the physical manifestation move around in your body? Did you encounter any difficulties with this process? Was it hard for you to recognize your emotion? So if we if we can't feel our emotions, if we have trouble with feeling our emotions, we'll have trouble with healing them. So I just just a a starting point is how good are you at recognizing your emotions? Some people have difficulty finding a location in their body that corresponds. So it's just that's no big deal. It's just that some people have um, better ability to feel. Uh, sensations associated with feelings and some people just are not inclined that way and it's not a big deal okay um, another reason is that we might go numb if an emotion is too strong so just focus on whatever you do feel and maybe just a general sense of uneasiness or numbness and just focus with that compassionate awareness so it's also sometimes that the emotion that first appears can change into a different emotion or it could change location. So it might start out as fear, tension behind the eyes can morph into grief, grief residing in the pit of your stomach. And as we're able to identify, feel, and compassionately allow ourselves to experience our emotions, we often uncover deeper layers of emotion underneath and that is a huge part of um, the healing process too you think that you've uncovered whatever it is that you're you're trying to heal and then you revisit it later and you're like wow there's this whole other layer inside to this that i didn't recognize before but if you start feeling overwhelmed as you do any of these practices let the exercise go until you feel safe and comfortable again healing takes time and limits must be respected that's another huge part of self-compassion so if you walk slowly you'll go farther and then another thing i wanted to share with you guys um, is another acronym for going through these processes and this one is from tara brock and her book uh, radical self-compassion she also has plenty of like if you just google tara brock she has plenty of talks and stuff it's um, T-A-R-A-B-R-A-C-H. Uh, she has lots of talks that you can listen to about it. And the practice is called RAIN, R-A-I-N. And it's a really great practice to use when you wanna go deeper and do some um, intentional work on self-compassion. And it's not just self-compassion work. It's actually um, diving into the ability to feel our emotions okay so rain stands for recognize allow investigate nurture write that down i think it's really helpful to write down so the first one that we did in the in the exercise is soften soothe allow i find that soften soothe allow is um, a much easier in the moment um practice than rain because rain takes a little bit more um, intellectual work so soften soothe allow and rain is recognize allow investigate nurture okay so in my mind rain is something that you might do when you're journaling when you're further investigating an emotion like if there's a situation that continually is bothering you or a person that's continually bothering you, you can go into your journal and start to dive in to those feelings and those emotions and try to get, I always like to say, seven layers deep into the problem or the situation. So again, you're gonna recognize 
whatever it is you're feeling about the situation, that's the R, labeling the emotion. We need to start getting in touch with what it is that we're feeling. And then allowing it is just saying, yes, that's what it is. Yes, that's fear, that's anger, that's resentment, that's disgust, that's... I find it really helpful to just like look up a list of emotions sometimes and 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 sort of like get familiar with those emotions because sometimes you don't even have the word to describe whatever it is you're feeling so if you have trouble with that you can just google a list of emotions and sort of run through and and you know compare them to the situation and go is that what it is is that what it is is that what it is and then so you label it and then you just say yes that yes that's what it is you know we're not judging and then we're investigating that emotion right so we're asking ourselves like one of the key key questions to ask yourself um when you're doing any kind of self-compassion practice is what do i need right now okay what what do i need in that situation or what would i need in that situation and uh you investigate, well, if I'm feeling anger, you know, maybe I need to hear, and it's not how you need the other person to change, right? It's it's asking yourself, what need do you have that's unfulfilled, you know, that maybe you could find a way to meet yourself so that you wouldn't have this response to the situation. And then the nurture part of it is giving giving yourself some of that is you know okay maybe i could develop some kind of self-care practice or self-love practice um one of the stories in the book that the the workbook was about this woman who felt like uh, her husband you know wasn't giving her enough affection wasn't giving her enough words of affirmation or or whatever your love language is, I related to it, right? Because I feel like I'm that needy little puppy right now who's going and trying to get, you know, extra love and affection from Junior all day long. And we put a lot of expectations on our partners to fulfill our needs, but we have a huge responsibility to fill our own needs, which is a big part of self-compassion as well. So what she started doing, which is a practice that I'm um, going to implement, I'm going to put a journal on my nightstand and every day before I go to bed I'm gonna write some really nurturing words to myself so I'm gonna go over the day sort of think about how the day could have been better or situations where I had you know strong or difficult emotions and just give myself that extra bit of nurturing or tell myself the things that I need to hear like I'm proud of everything you accomplished today you did so much or I know today was a really hard day, you did your best, it's okay to have days like this, everybody has days like this, and then you can read it again later. So what I plan to do is write a few sentences every night before I go to bed, and then every morning um, after I make the bed, because I've been making an effort to make the bed every day, I will pick that journal back up off my nightstand and reread those words. So that small practice of giving yourself that extra bit of nurturing can make a huge impact on um, your meeting your own needs. And meeting your own needs can you know, make a big, big difference in expecting other people to be different, right? Well, it's, it's really the only thing we have control over is ourselves and setting boundaries, which is a completely other huge topic, but um, yeah, so we can go through these, we can go through these prompts in our journal to recognize, allow, investigate, and nurture ourselves. And that's a big, big, big start, okay? We just went through a lot of stuff. So digest that. This video I'm going to pin to the top of the group, so if you want to come back and rewatch it, um, if you want to skip to just the exercise and do the exercise if you didn't get a chance to do it today, you can totally do that. Leave a comment if you tried it and you liked it. Invite a friend to come join the group if you thought this video was helpful and you'd like them to check it out. I'm gonna try to be showing up more often here with more exercises and you know value. And then another thing that I wanted to mention 
which is going to be very valuable as well, is a workshop that I'm planning. So the workshop's going to be about 90 minutes long. It's going to be about cultivating self-worth. Self-compassion is such a huge part of self-worth. So we're going to be going over that and also self-trust. We're going to be talking about self-trust um, and other things that go into cultivating self-worth and ditching perfectionism because all of us need to just ditch the perfectionism right now and let it go and say, <laughs> I'm done with you. Perfectionism is not healthy striving. It's not self-improvement. It's born out of shame and we don't want it. We, I'm a recovering perfectionist myself. I call myself the, the queen of good enough now. And it's changed my life. So I'm inviting you to come and get more information about the workshop. Look at this little kitty. Her tail just whipping around here. Um, I'm inviting you to come get more information about the workshop. I have not set an official date, but it's going to be in about the next three weeks. And if you want more information, just comment on this post or send me a message on Instagram or send me a message on Facebook. Doesn't matter where you message me, just message me and I'll grab your email from you and then I'll make sure that you get all the details whenever they're finalized. And it's going to be a probably $39 price point and we're really going to give you some actionable tools to work on your self-worth because I know... For me personally, this situation has really put me to the test on um, how worthy I can feel without all of the external things like accomplishments and um, certain measures of success that we've just kind of lost access to. So yeah, please send me a message and if you like this, you know, like it, share it and let me know because letting me know is the best thing you can do because it's validating and it lets me know what to make more of and what to do more of and that is that for today thank you so much for coming participating doing this for yourself give yourself a big hug a big pat on the back because you're showing up for yourself and that is so huge okay i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day i hope you're doing okay Talk to me anytime. I'm always in my DMs. So that's that. Bye.